On day one, I spawned into a swamp biome as a baby tadpole. As a tadpole, I only had five hearts. Where did my legs go? I noticed that my mom was sitting in front of me on top of a lily pad. Come along, Max. All your brothers and sisters are already upstream. I'll be right there. She hopped away. But as I began to follow, a witch walked up to me. Ooh, you're a unique one. Thanks. Perfect for my next potion. The witch suddenly put a spell on me, and I started to follow her. Stop it! I don't think tadpoles can breathe above water! Hush, little one. The spell was strong. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to break it. On day two, I woke up and set a massive tank of water inside the witch's manor. What the? I began to swim around the tank looking for help. Eventually, I found a lone axolotl. Hi, uh, can you explain to me where we are? You must be new here. Welcome to the trench. It's basically where all aquatic creatures come to die. What do you mean? That witch lady that took you? She uses us for potions. Every day she comes in and takes one of us. You never know if today will be your last day. That's horrible. I said my goodbyes to the axolotl, but I knew what would come next. I have to figure out a way to get out of here and make it back to my family. I tried to ram myself full speed into the glass, but it wouldn't budge. I'm too weak. Next, I patrolled the tank further, looking for a spot to break out from the perimeter. But I couldn't find any weak points. This place is huge. Man, she must need a lot of animals for her potions. I'm totally going to die here. On day three, I finally grew into a full-size frog. As an adult, I had 10 hearts, but I still wouldn't be strong enough to break the glass wall of the tank. I hopped onto a lily pad above the water. If I didn't come up with something, I would be toast. Okay, I have to get out of here. Think, Max, think. Just then, I noticed a hole in the roof of the tank, but it was pretty high up. Maybe if I jump high enough, I can make it out. I got to hopping, but each attempt wasn't high enough. Come on, Max. You got this. I focused hard, gathering all the energy and courage I could muster. After a few moments, I jumped super high, finally making it through the hole. Don't worry, everyone. I'll come back and save you when I can. I began to waddle towards the front door, but as a frog, I couldn't move very fast. Just as I was about to reach the exit, the evil witch started to chase me. What do you think you're doing? I'm getting out of here. I quickly jumped out the door before she could catch me. No one ever escapes my clutches. How if I knew if it's the last thing I do? Now I just gotta find my way home. On days four through seven, I was officially free to explore the overworld. I began looking around in hopes of finding my family. Mom? Hello? I explored for a while, checking multiple bodies of water, but my old swamp was nowhere in sight. I had a feeling that this would be the start to a long journey ahead. I must be really far away. If I want to survive, I'll have to prepare. I headed to a savanna biome, but as I entered, I changed colors. Huh, I changed colors based on the biome I'm in. Interesting. I switched gears and focused on gathering up materials for my quest. I punched from trees for wood and built a crafting bench. There, I crafted up some wooden tools. Using my new pickaxe, I gathered cobblestone and upgraded to stone tools. Woo! All that work sure worked up an appetite. I set off in search of some food. I came across a herd of sheep, but as a frog, I couldn't eat meat. Ugh, I'd rather not. Better keep looking. I continued to look and found another field with lots of cows. No, thank you. I continued on a little bit longer and found a group of chickens. I'm getting angry. At last, I came across a swamp biome. It wasn't my home, but it was full of little slimes that were mine for the taking. Finally, some good food. I got the slang, killing slimes one by one. Afterwards, I took the opportunity to fill up my stomach and take some slime balls for the road. Ah, much better. On days eight through 11, my journey brought me to a mysterious forest. I began to pass through blindly in hopes of finding anyone who could help nearby. This place is creepy. Hey kid, look out. What? Suddenly, I was attacked by a bear. I quickly took out my stone axe and began to fight them off. It was a close fight, but I managed to keep them at bay. Ooh, that was a close one. Who said that? Over here. I looked over and spotted a small bluebird perched in front of me. I haven't seen you around here. Are you lost? Actually, I am. 
have you seen any frogs around here? No, just me and that crazy witch. She seemed crazier than usual. Probably because I escaped from her. What? You got out of the trench? You're tougher than you look. What's your name? I'm Max. Well, Max, I'm Beatrice. I'm happy to help anyone against that nasty witch. Here, take this map. Maybe it'll help. Beatrice then handed me a map titled The Sewer. Wow, thanks. If you need any help, I'll be around. Without another word, she walked away. What a nice lady. I hope I get to see her again. On days 12 through 15, I made a stone sword, then followed the map I had received from Beatrice and arrived at a sewer. Maybe passing through will take me home. I entered the sewer and discovered that a swarm of flies was infesting the place. Snack time! I whipped out my stone sword and began to take them out one by one. Although there were a lot of them, they were no match for my sword. After slaying the entire swarm, I gathered all the maggots they dropped for food later. Yummy! I pressed on into the darkness, eventually stumbling upon a group of baby turtles. Hey guys, what's the matter? We're lost. We can't find our mama. I know that feeling all too well. I'll help find her for you. I explored the different parts of the sewer. It was hard to tell how long I looked, but eventually I managed to find their mom. I brought her back to where her babies were and reunited them. Mama, mama! My babies! Thank you, little frog. Please, take this. She handed me a turtle shell helmet as a gift of thanks. Wow, thank you. Have you seen any frogs pass through here? Sorry, dear, I haven't. Darn. Well, thank you anyways. I parted with the turtle family and trekked on for a while. I eventually found the exit to the sewers with no new leads. Another dead end. On days 16 through 19, I was beginning to get really tired. I knew I would need to rest soon. If I didn't, I would start to see phantoms. I made a stone axe that began to chop down some trees. After that, I began to build a temporary home for myself. It wasn't much, but I was able to finish up as night fell. Finally, I'll get to have a peaceful night. As I was admiring my work, a horde of skeletons started to attack me. I fought them off for as long as I could, but there were too many for me to take on alone. I ran inside as fast as I could. I'm just a frog! I can't handle this! I waited until morning, trying my best to sleep through the sounds of skeletons outside my door. Once the sun rose, I stepped outside to find the coast was clear. Ew! I'm gonna need something to protect myself. I set off and found a large cave where I began to mine for some materials. After some digging, I managed to find some iron ore, copper ore, and coal. I quickly made a furnace and smelted the iron into ingots. With that, I crafted myself an iron sword and a pair of iron boots. Nice! Time to keep moving. On days 20 through 23, I continued to try to find my way home. It was a creepy night. Man, I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. I was hungry, so I continued on until finding a scary looking town. I don't like it here. Hello. You seem to be here awfully early. Oh, <laughs> actually, I was just leaving. What? Once you're here, you can't leave this place. Ah! I ran away, booking it to a nearby house. When I got inside, there were even more pumpkin people. Welcome, face little frog. I'm lost and trying to find my family. I just want to go home. Just then, a mysterious giant with a pumpkin head walked up. Now once you're here, you know we nobody does. I ran away, leaving the town as fast as I could. On days 24 through 26, I had finally fled the pumpkin town when an axolotl swam up to me. Hey, I found you! What the? You're from the trench. That's right! Ever since you escaped, you motivated all the other creatures to escape! Oh, really? Nice! Be careful, though! The witch is still looking for you! You ruined her plans, and now she's out for revenge! Just then, the witch appeared. There you are! Ah! Run, Max! We'll meet you again soon, I hope! The two of us split up and fled while the witch casted magic in my direction. Luckily, I managed to get away. I'll find you, little one. Mark my words. I ran until finally stopping in a cave to hide. Please don't find me. Please don't find me. The witch walked right up to my hiding place. I noticed that she had the axolotl in a bucket, but I was too weak to stop her in my current state. As she walked away, I vowed to save the axolotl. Once the coast was clear, I went out and killed some sheep, making a bed and setting up camp inside the cave for the night. 
On days 27 through 29, I went deeper in the cave and stayed in and found some flies congregating inside. I quickly slayed them and ate them up for my breakfast. Yum! But if I'm gonna stand a chance, I need more materials. I went mining and found coal, stone, and iron. With my new materials, I sucked up on torches and started smelting my iron. Now just gotta wait. I waited patiently for my iron to smelt, but suddenly I was ambushed by a horde of zombies. Uh -oh. I whipped out my sword and began to fight them off. They had me both in size and numbers, but I managed to push through, slaying every last one of them. Upon their death, they dropped some zombie flesh. Maybe frogs can eat this? I tried it out, but it was just as gross as it was to humans. Ugh. I'll stick to the flies. With my materials refilled, I continued to explore the cave. It was extremely vast, deep, and practically never ending. Wait, which way did I come from? I hopped around helplessly, but I was lost. I had no choice but to make camp for the night. On days 30 through 33, I was still lost in the cave system, but I was determined to find a way out. During my travels, I discovered a weird mushroom bunny creature. Ah, monster! Whoa, oh, kid, I ain't a monster. Oh. Sorry, I'm Max. What's your name? Call me Bun Bun. Actually, I think I know something that would help you. I'm looking for the rainbow fly. Rainbow fly? Yeah, it's fabled to give you superpowers. Ooh, really? Yep, just gotta chow down on it. How about it? I eagerly agreed and set off in search of the fly. The cave was huge, but after some searching, I saw a rainbow fly buzzing about. That must be it. I jumped up and hit it with my iron sword. It only took one hit for it to go down. Huh, I guess it's just a fly after all. I gobbled it up, but nothing seemed to happen. Was this a trick? I hopped to leave the cave and found myself propelling high in the air. I now had a super jump. Whoa, this is awesome! I returned to Bun Bun to tell him about my discovery. I also asked if there were any other secrets he could tell me. For a prize, yes. Bring me some eggs of an anaconda. A what? Are you crazy? I'm just a little frog. Well then scram, kiddo. Don't come back till you got him. Okay, okay. I'll think about it. Thanks for the help. I hopped away, wondering if more information would be worth the risk. On days 34 through 36, I finally discovered an exit to the cave. I hopped out using my new super jump power and basked in the sunlight. Ah, fresh air. I frolicked through the overworld. I missed the feeling of grass on my feet, and now I had no roof to hold back my super jumps. This is amazing! However, during all my excitement, I took a leap that was way too high. Whoa, 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 whoa! Is this it? Am I gonna die? I braced for impact, but once I hit the ground, I landed without any damage. Huh, I guess with super jump, I also don't take fall damage. I looked around and noticed that I was in an entirely different spot. Is this a frog town? My peeps, this could be a great opportunity to find where my mom is. I socialized with the townsfolk, trying to get a lead on my mom. What does she look like? Like three inches tall, slimy skin. Sorry. I haven't seen her. What does she sound like? Uh, she ribbits a lot. Sorry, I haven't seen her. I was starting to lose hope when I heard my name in the distance. Max, is that really you? Yes, it is. And you are? Ribbles Midley, at your service. Your mother and I go way back. Perfect. On days 37 through 39, I talked to Ribbles in hopes that he would give me the lead I needed. So how is your mother? Is she here? That's the problem. I got lost from her and the rest of my siblings. I'm sorry to hear that, my boy. I know she had intentions of heading to Frogland. You could try there. Frogland? But aren't we there now? No, this is Frog Town. Frogland is the most magical and beautiful place in the world. It's the greatest frog city this land has ever known. She wanted a better life for you and your siblings. How do I get there? That's the problem. I don't know. But here, take this map. It'll lead you to Franklin. He might know. Thanks, Ribbles. I left Frogtown and started to make my way towards the location on the map. It wasn't long, though, that the sun began to set, so I made a small camp and called it a night. Tomorrow, I get one step closer to finding my family. On days 40 through 43, I made a pickaxe. Afterwards, I followed the map, leading me to a swamp biome. 
Ah, uh, so many swamps, but none of them are home. I made my way through the biome, reminiscing about my old home, when suddenly a group of crocodiles emerged from the water. Ah, uh, you don't want to eat me? I'm small and squishy. The crocodiles lunge at me with their massive jaws. If they wanted to, they could swallow me in one bite. I had to be sure to evade as many of their attacks as possible. Otherwise, I was toast. I traversed from lily pad to lily pad while they tried to capture me with their chompers. I fought them off with my sword, and despite my size, I managed to slay the entire group. I moved on until I arrived at a small hut to find an old frog waiting for me at the doorway. Are you Franklin? Yes. What brings you here, child? I'm Max. I'm looking for Frogland. I think my mom might be there. Frogland? How dare you say that name with such disrespect? Oh, no, I didn't mean to. You're far too weak to go to such a sacred place. Come back when you're stronger. How can I get stronger? Wait! Bun Bun! With another barrier in my way, it was time to go get those anaconda eggs and prove my worth. I made my way deep underground and headed towards the anaconda's nest. On the way, I found some diamonds. Score! I quickly used it to craft some diamond armor for the possibility of an upcoming battle. On days 44 through 47, I arrived at a cavern covered in snakeskin. She must be close. I traveled deeper inside until I finally reach a cave littered with snake eggs. Okay, Max, sneaking time. I shifted into stealth, sneakily waddling throughout the cave and snagging as many eggs as I could. I never knew when the anaconda could return to her den. Okay, this should be enough. What should be enough? I turned around and spotted the anaconda staring right at me. An enough time in this cave. <laughs> you stole my eggs! I'm gonna have to eat you now! She began slithering towards me to constrict me with her tail. I knew if I was caught, I would be finished. I tried to chip down her health with my sword, being sure to keep a safe distance between us. She was fast, so I began to jump around using my high jump. She couldn't catch me in the air. Get down here! As I landed, she managed to grab a hold of me and squeeze me tight. Ugh! I managed to break free, but my advantage was short-lived. Some of the eggs hatched, sending a swarm of baby anacondas in my direction. Yes, my babies. Eat him! I got him, mommy! Ah, get off me, dude! I shifted my focus to the horde of baby anacondas. Despite only just hatching, they were incredibly strong, just like their mom. They all grouped together and tried to kill me. They keep coming! I slashed away, until all that was left was the mom. Luckily, I had already dropped her health enough to deal the finishing blow. Sorry, snake lady. Nothing personal. On days 48 through 50, I returned to Bun Bun to give him my findings. When I arrived, I tossed over the eggs, and he was pleased. Hm, not bad, kid. Anaconda eggs make a mean omelet. All of that was just for your breakfast? Don't knock it till you try it. Anyways, that intel I promised. There's a chest out there that holds a powerful sword. It's located in Mosquitoville. Find the giant lamp and you'll get your reward. Take this map to find your way there. Thanks, Bun Bun. Oh, and take this. Trust me, you'll need it. Understood. I began to journey where the map led. I went through multiple biomes, including a snowy biome, turning me green. Ooh, I like this color on me. I continued until finally arriving at a giant lamp surrounded by mosquitoes. I waddled closer, but I was stopped by a mosquito. What do you think you're doing? You are not worthy to approach the Oh Great One. Huh? Oh Great One? The lamp? That's right, state your business. I was told there was a powerful sword here. <sighs> Only the Chosen are worthy of the sword. Step forward to be judged by the lamp. I did as I was told and stepped before the lamp. All fell silent as I observed it. Just then, a mosquito flew into the lamp, causing it to turn off. Uh-oh. The frog extinguished our glorious lamp. Die! A swarm of mosquitoes attacked me, so I went down my bow and arrows and shot them down from the sky. They were more bark than bite, but boy were their bites itchy. Whenever one managed to grab onto me, they would suck my blood. <laughs> Ew, 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 ew. I hit them off with my sword, but they took back to the sky and shot my own blood back at me. Ugh, gross. Despite their numbers, I was the stronger fighter. After a long battle, I managed to take them all down. Yeah, I'm remembering now why I hate mosquitoes so much. With the battle decided, I built up to the lamp and mined through the barrier. Just as Bun Bun had said, there was a chest inside. I opened it and claimed the sword of immortality. Sweet! I tried it out on some mobs, and it gave me regeneration and absorption powers. With my new abilities on hand, I headed back towards Franklin. Time to find my mom! On days 51 through 53, I was far more powerful with my new sword, so I headed back to Franklin's hut to see if I was now worthy. When I arrived, I found that the house had been set on fire. Oh no! I rushed into the wreckage to find Franklin wounded. What happened? 
The witch, she did this. She followed you and attacked me when you left. You are a fool for leading her here. I'm so sorry. I'll make this right. She knows of Frogland and she's heading there. You must go quickly. Am I worthy? I see you've grown in strength. You are worthy to enter Frogland. How do I get there? You need frog lamps to enter. Go to the nether and eat some magma cubes to produce lamps. Once you have enough, return to me. I thanked him for his help and gave him some of my maggots to heal up. Thank you, child. On days 54 through 57, I knew I was going to need materials to make a nether portal, so I set off to the mines. I mined away and managed to find more coal and iron, but no diamond. Come on, come on! I kept pushing. I was going to need diamond if I was going to get to the nether. After a while, I managed to strike a small vein of them. Perfect! I built a crafting bench and crafted a diamond pickaxe using the new materials I had discovered. Now that I have a diamond pickaxe, I just need some obsidian. I gathered some water in my bucket and poured it out onto a pool of lava. I then mined up all the obsidian I would need for the portal. Now that I had everything in hand, I returned to the overworld and crafted a nether portal. Here goes nothing. I hopped into the portal and started my journey into the nether. On days 58 through 61, I arrived in the nether. Whoa, this place is huge. I hopped through multiple different biomes and explored to my heart's content. There were tons of new materials I could gather, and tons of strange mobs. After a lot of traveling, I came across a group of magma cubes. Perfect! It's dinner time! I waddled towards them, but a warped toad stepped in front of me. Hey, Pipsqueak, this is my dinner. Get out of here! Maybe we can share? No, it's mine! The warp toad hit me with his tongue and the battle began. He was slower than me. However, he matched my strength and jumping abilities. I fended him off the best I could with my sword and bow and used its healing abilities to make up for lost health. After a fierce battle, I managed to slay the warp toad. Sorry, the fate of Frogland is in my hands. I continued into the magma cube colony and began to slay them for magma cream. Once I had enough, I dug in. Ah, spicy! Each cream I ate created an ochre frog light like magic. I chowed down until I had plenty of lights for my ticket into Frogland. This should be enough. Time to go back to Franklin. On days 62 through 65, I returned to the overworld and checked in on Franklin. He was doing much better and even rebuilt his home. Ah, Max, you have returned with the frog lights. Thank you for your help. Please take this map and enter Frogland. Thanks. But be warned, the journey is treacherous. I assured Franklin that I would be okay and set off towards the entry gates of Frogland. I eventually arrived at a cave and began to make my way through a variety of corridors. As my legs were about to give out, I entered a deep dark biome with a warden at the center. He heard my footsteps and turned to me. The altar of Frogland is just beyond this point. You may not pass unless you best me in battle. I'm all in. Then your challenge is accepted. We both readied ourselves and charged into battle. I thought I'd have it in the bag since he was blind, but his chest began to glow and he sent echo waves in my location. I evaded his advances with my jumping abilities and shot a flurry of arrows in his direction. I was lucky enough to get in these hits early. However, he was no pushover either. He charged at me, but I was too small for him to hit. Where are you? He continued to charge me with great force, but I evaded each of his attacks. I jumped and landed the finishing blow. You're stronger than you look. You are worthy. I passed by the guard and entered a cavern with a mysterious altar. There were signs indicating where I should place the three froglight offerings to enter. Wow, this is impressive. Well, better do what I came here for. I placed the lights at the altar and suddenly the ceiling disappeared. I was gonna have to jump higher than ever before. I focused hard and jumped up into the entrance of Frogland. On days 66 through 68, I arrived in Frogland and it was incredible. Frogs of all sizes were everywhere. This is awesome. Unfortunately, the witch had beat me there and had begun to wreak havoc. How did you even get in? You're not a frog. I didn't have to be one, I just used one. She then revealed my mom trapped in a cage. Mommy! If I can't have you for my patience, then the rest of Frogland will suffice. She pulled out the axolotl in a bucket. Axolotl! No! She drank him and transformed into a mutant witch. <laughs> Try to stop me now, little froggy! You'll pay for that. I jumped into battle and gave it everything I had. I swung my sword and used my super jump to try to evade the witch's attacks, but she was powerful. She sent a shockwave on the ground that sent me flying. She was ruthless and killed civilians around her, but it wasn't long before I realized I was no match for her. I had no choice but to flee. <laughs> Run away, little coward! This city belongs to me now!
with a heavy heart I escaped. But I vowed to return to Frogland and free my mom, as well as the rest of the city. On days 69 through 72, I tried to formulate a game plan that could rescue my mom and the whole city. But that was a big task. What to do? Just then, Bun Bun appeared. Hey kid, I saw you struggling and I want to help you improve your fighting skills. It won't be easy, but what do you say? I'll do anything to save my mom. Okay then, follow me. For my first challenge, Bun Bun had me jump from mountain to mountain. At this point though, I was a jumping master. Next! After parkour, my lesson was in speed. I had to clear a series of jumps on top of falling platforms. If I failed, I would fall into the lava pit below. This seems dangerous. I crossed the lava pit the best I could. I couldn't wait too long, otherwise I was fried. Timing was key, but I managed to get a rhythm down. With a lot of courage, I managed to land each jump and clear the course. For my final test, I had to exterminate roaches. There must have been hundreds of them. I got to work, using my sword to cut each of them down. After a lot of slashing, I killed every last one. What was that supposed to train me on? I don't know, I just had a roach problem. You've done well, Max, but there is one final test that will make you a truly strong frog. What is it? You must face the Swamp Creeper. The Swamp Creeper? Budman explained that he was a strong foe and would be very difficult to kill. If you wish to become strong like me, you must vanquish this monster. Ugh. Fine. On days 73 through 76, I headed to the swamp in search of the creeper. Okay, Max, it's just a normal old creeper. You got this. I arrived at the heart of the swamp. There stood a giant swamp creeper. Okay, so not a normal creeper. Got it. You dare enter my domain. Yeah, I do. Let's fight. <laughs> This'll be fun! I started by sending arrows in his direction, but they seemed to fall short of the kind of damage I really needed. I switched to my blade and tried to get in up close, but the Swamp Creeper wasn't that easy to take down. He was surprisingly agile, and each hit he made would cause me to float in the air. He also was able to throw explosives at me that destroyed the ground below us. I kept swinging away, trying my best to evade his attacks, but just as his health got low, he began to explode. But that'll kill you too! Exactly! I'm taking you down with me! I quickly made a run for it and ducked behind cover just as he erupted into flames. Just like that, I had won the battle. Yes! I did it! Upon my victory, I transformed into a super froggy. I now had 15 hearts. Whoa! This is sweet! The Swamp Creeper also dropped a spyglass, which I claimed as my prize. It allowed me to see things that were super far away. One step closer to freeing Frogland. On day 77 through 80, I was feeling strong after all my training, but I knew it still wasn't enough. I have to be even stronger. Time to scout out some more ways to train. I traveled until I came across a village hosting a leapfrog tournament. The grand prize was a bow that can shoot underwater. Now that can be handy when trying to take down the mutant witch. Sign me up. I entered the tournament and the first round began. I blew through one round after the next. Most of the competitors were a joke who could barely clear a block. This is gonna be easy. We'll see about that. Round after rounds, more contestants were eliminated until only myself and the bunny remained. This was it, the final round. Whoever could jump the highest wins the grand prize. See you on the other side, frog. Bunny leapt up super high into the air and stuck the landing. Let's see you beat that. I will, super easily. I summoned all of my jumping power and sprang up into the air super high. Shh, this is your captain speaking. Shh, uh, I think I'm the winner. I shot back to the earth and stuck the landing without a shred of fall damage. How did you do that? A lot of training, believe in yourself. Just like that, I won the tournament and the Neptunian Bow Grand Prize. On days 81 through 85, I wanted to try out my new bow, so I found a nearby body of water and shot down some hammerhead sharks. It was able to hit them with ease. The next fish that messes with me is sushi. Once I was done testing, I went mining and struck a ton of diamonds. It must be my lucky day. I used my findings to craft a diamond helmet and some iron leggings. Now that I was suited up with an appropriate weapon, I went to explore the ocean in search of anything else that could aid me in battle with the mutant witch. While I was exploring, I met a catfish. Hi, I'm Max. How are you? Oh, pretty good. I recently broke out of this horrible place called the Trench. Hey, I used to be trapped there too. I'm trying to take down the witch who imprisoned us. Well then, hey, you got my back. Is there any way you could help me with something though? Of course. The catfish gave me a map that led to a horrible monster deep underwater. He said if I was able to defeat it, he would make it worth my while. I thanked him and went on my way. The ocean was was vast and endless. I had never realized how unnerving it was until now. Man, 
The ocean is creepy. After a bit more traveling, I arrived at the sea monster's domain. On days 86 through 88, I swam into the den of the monster. He was huge and terrifying. You dare challenge me? Yeah. Well, very large frog, let's fight! Ah! We both charged at each other, and the battle began. He was quick underwater, which made it difficult to hit him. Luckily for me, my bow was super efficient and allowed me to shoot arrows even in water. The fight continued, each of us trading blows back and forth. You're pretty tough for a frog. You haven't seen nothing yet. Ribbit! The monster was powerful. Without my sword of immortality for quick regeneration, I'd be a goner. Where did you get such a powerful blade? Would you believe me if I said Walmart? I continued to fight my hardest until finally taking the monster down. Booyah! After the fight, I left the monster den, returning to the catfish to tell him the good news. That's incredible! Thank you so much for your bravery. It was no problem, really. Oh my god, let's please take this. It was some sort of blaster. This is awesome, thank you. Once night fell, I tested the new item on some mobs. It was a powerful water gun that could take down mobs in the blink of an eye. Whoa! On days 89 through 92, I hopped around until I ran into a castle. Huh, this could be promising. I decided to investigate and look around. Inside the castle, a princess was standing there waiting for someone. Oh, my prince! Your what? Without hesitation, she ran up to me and gave me a smooch. <laughs> ah, what are you doing? After she kissed me, my frog body started to transform, turning me into a human frog. Hey, I got legs! Human legs! Ah, you're disgusting! Uh, excuse you? Rude much? You are not my true love! You must die! She pulled out a sword and began to charge after me. What the? You're crazy! What is wrong with you? I'm not crazy! I've only waited years for this moment! I didn't ask for this! She continued to swipe her sword at me with no signs of stopping. Hey, stop it! Stop it! You're gonna hurt yourself with that! I quickly headed towards the exit to make my escape. Hey, I'm stuck! Ah! I just want to be normal again! Once I got a good distance away, I turned back to normal. Ugh, that was weird. No more side quests for me. On days 93 through 96, I was just straight vibing until a bunny ran up to me with a letter from Bun Bun. Oh, thanks little guy. The bunny ran off and I read the message. Max, the witch has struck again. Please come to my home as soon as you can. Bun Bun. Oh my god, Bun Bun is in danger. I rushed off towards Bun Bun's hideout to find everything destroyed. I searched through the area and found Bun Bun injured in the rubble. Bun Bun, what happened? The witch interrogated me for hours. She took all my info, my training, and is going to use it to create a horrible potion. She even said your mom would be the final ingredient. You must go to her lair, Max. As he said those final words, he died. Ah, no! In my moment of anger, I found an area littered with roaches, eliminating almost all of them. This is for you, Bun Bun! Afterwards, I realized I was gonna need some strength for my upcoming battle with the witch. I traveled far and wide, coming across a wandering trader. I bought multiple potions of strength from him. Okay, witch, you're going down! On days 97 through 99, I returned to Frogland to confront the witch, but when I arrived, the streets were empty. It's quiet. Too quiet. I searched around until finding a group of rocky rollers in the middle of the road. Hey, Tony, look who it is. Oi! Well, if it isn't a big bad frog. Very funny, guys. Where's the witch? The witch is through this door right here. She's got your little mum, too. Let me pass, and there won't be any trouble. You having a laugh, mate? I've had enough of this. Let's make this frog croak. I shot my arrows at them from afar, but they were able to quickly close the gap by rolling in their shells. I switched to my sword, being sure to heal when my health got too low. They moved in a group like clockwork, but luckily my strength surpassed their defense. I took down every last one of them. Okay, time to go save my mom. As I rushed through the door, I was instantly teleported away. On day 100, I reached the witch's battle arena. Off to the side, my mom was trapped in a cage. Mom! I've been waiting for you, little frog. Why are you doing this? We're not meant to be a part of your potions. For science? For medical advancement? Liar. Okay, you're right. I do it because it's so much fun. Speaking of which, I'm going to enjoy making you and your mother into a poison potion. I warn you, if you don't let my mom go, I'll have no choice but to put you down. Let's see if you can. <laughs> 
And with that, the final fight commenced. I started by drinking my potion of strength, giving a huge boost in damage. I tried to shoot my arrows at her, but they bounced off her armor. Guess I'm going in close. She was able to do a lot of damage with both her crushing attacks and crystals. Luckily, I had my sword of immortality, which allowed me to heal whenever I got too low. How is this possible? You're just a frog! Anything is possible if you try your hardest. So that's just what I did. I put everything I had into the fight, hopping around and hitting her with my sword. If she got too close, I would take that opportunity to use my deadly water blaster. With her strength and durability, though, it didn't seem to do much. I pressed on, though, slashing over and over again. At times, I thought I wouldn't make it, but I kept fighting through it to save my mom. After a while, I could tell she was hurt. I knew it was time. Good night, you evil witch! I landed the finishing blow, killing the witch once and for all, and freeing all of Frogland. I released my mom from her prison, and we both celebrated together. Ribbit! 